We are gathered together to prepare our hearts for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, to meditate upon the mystery of his incarnation by which our nature is redeemed, and to receive with joy the message of our salvation. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God in Trinity, creator, savior, giver of life and truth, in the quiet, meet us with your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully receive the story of your birth and experience afresh the wonder that you were born to us as a human infant. Reveal to us our own possibilities, that we may attain the fullness of our humanity, as we are glad, Creator God, when the dawn reveals to the world, the world to us, innocent and fresh, May we discover the infant in the manger and in delight be ready to start anew. Amen. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man who, whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's mar name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and what pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Don't tell anyone, please, promise me. I just had to tell someone. So I'm telling you, but you have to keep this a secret, okay? We've always told each other all of our secrets, and I know you've never told anyone mine. Like about the time I kissed Judah ben Naaman on a dare, or the time I borrowed Amma's earrings and wore them in the orchard you never told on me, and I've never told on you. Remember how I told you how I got the blood three months ago? Amma, or Mom, took me to the Mikabab, and we bathed. The woman sang the songs on me and called me blessed. I felt blessed. I felt honored to now be a woman as much as I despise the blood. Did you learn the songs? I'm trying to remember them. I know you would have loved to have been there. So many of our women came to celebrate with me. A few weeks later, I got the blood again. It was not exciting at all. The mikvah was the only good part. Stepping down into the pure water, singing the blessing and praying the scriptures, being washed and clean as you come out is wonderful. When your time comes, you'll like it, I'm sure. But after the first time, it was just Amma and me. She reminded me how blessed we are to be the Lord's chosen. We sang the songs and prayed, but it was just the two of us. And there were so many days of sitting with the blood first, just sitting and waiting 
Then finally, the mikvah, and I could go back to normal life. But then again, in a few weeks, the blood. I sit in the same corner of the courtyard under the olive tree, you know, the one we used to climb. Sitting and wearing the rags, and the blessing is so strange, and the bleeding is so strange, I don't understand why we have it. Amma says the blood is the Lord's way of reminding us that life is possible because of a sacrifice. She told me, you are my little lamb, Mary, just like the perfect lambs at the altar in Jerusalem. Your blood is an offering. Do you think your mother will say such things to you someday? I want to be an offering to the Lord, but I don't like how long it takes sitting there with the blood. I don't like how sticky and hot it is, how ashamed I feel when I have to wash the blood out of the rags. But none of this is a secret. These things you will soon know all by yourself. But that's what I was doing when it happened, sewing and bleeding. Amma and Papa had both gone to do their separate tasks. Amma was doing the washing at the rabbi's house, and Papa was at harvest. I was sitting there under the tree. It was hot. The sky was a beautiful deep blue, and the shadows of the olive tree were dappled on the ground. Then, just like that, the light in the trees changed. As if the clouds had come over the sun, I thought perhaps a storm was coming. But when I squinted up through the trees, there was a shadow and a shape. It was in the courtyard, not far from me, but it seemed to be sending lights in every direction. It was a human shape, I'm sure of it, but it was not human. I know you will not believe me, but please believe me, it is true. I tried and tried to see the shape's features, to understand what I was seeing, but I couldn't. Then it spoke, just as I am speaking to you now, just as clearly as that. Mary, you imagine, I was sitting there with the blood. I have never known a man, and I said as much. This shape, I know, I know it was a heavenly being. An angel said, you will bear the son of God, and his name will be called Jesus. I wasn't afraid. I was just puzzled. Why me? You know me, I'm not worthy of this. I'm not a princess, and I'm certainly not the smartest or most beautiful girl in the village. Plus, our village is the most boring place on earth. I keep wondering why the Lord would choose me, or here, or having a baby in the first place. Babies are adorable, but it's hard to believe a baby can amount to too much even if his name is Emmanuel. Has anything happened like this to you? Do you think maybe other girls all around Israel are getting babies from the Lord? I hope so. So I'd like to have someone to talk to. What the angel said has happened. I have not had the blood again. It has now been two moons without the blood, even my mother has noticed. She is watchful, and I am waiting to see when the angel will intervene to protect me against her suspicions. I don't know what is going to happen to me. You must believe me when I say that I do not know. All I know is that the angel promised me I was blessed. I know blessing. I trust it. Keep my secret, please, and pray for me. And when you get the blood, tell me quickly. I want to celebrate and sing with you. I want to remind you that your blood is a sacrifice that brings life.
in the face of demands and events we cannot control, make us like Mary, willing to say, yes, Lord, your will be done. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a human mother. Grant that we, who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace, may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. I was betrayed by a kiss. How could I know that my heart would be broken like this? Especially for Mary. I had known her even when she was a child. I know her parents. I watched her grow into a woman and saw her kindness and integrity. There was nothing to tell me that she would do this thing to me. I have been wrong before, like when Malachi ben Adam sold me that donkey. I thought it was only five years old. He swore the donkey was young and nimble. How was I to know that Malachi had rubbed the donkey's teeth with chalk and oiled his pelt to fool me? I knew Malachi could be deceptive, but what is that to me now? It's nothing. No one has betrayed me as Mary has. I loved her. Can you understand that? I saw in her the loveliness of a young woman mixed with the qualities of God, loving, gentle, quick to life, eager to work, content with little, generous to a fault. She was everything I could want in a wife, a partner, and she seemed to love me too. Whenever I came to help her father, she greeted me eagerly. She remembered the little things I told her about myself. She seemed delighted with the gifts I brought her. And that amazing day, just a few months ago, when we stood together and the rabbi announced our engagement, she was the one who took my hand and squeezed it. She was the one who turned and looked into my eyes with eagerness and joy. It was her lips, her eyes, her face that pressed up to kiss me. I had only to respond, the sweetest, sincerest kiss, I thought on it for days. It was like a festival meal filling me to the brim. And then for her to tell me this story, a story that insults God and offends me as well as breaks me in half, pregnant by a child from God, nonsense. I walk through the village and feel hatred toward any man I see. Who could have had her? Who could have done this to me? She told me as if I would believe her, believe that God would give her a child out of thin air, out of God's own will. Not that it's impossible. We know all, we know, we all know that with God, all things are possible, but it makes no sense. I'm a righteous man. If it was true, God would have told me. She insults God and she has ruined me. I am broken and betrayed. My only solace is sleep.
in the heartbreak of betrayal and confusion, make us like Joseph, willing to say, yes, Lord, your will be done. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who from the family of your servant David raised up Joseph to be the guardian of your incarnate son and the spouse of his mother, give us grace to imitate Joseph's uprightness of life and his obedience to your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. I am sitting in my garden in complete astonishment. How can this be happening to me? Is it possible that after so many years of prayers that God has allowed me to bear a child? I remember clearly the day those two angels came to my humble abode. I never doubted that my husband would not offer food and rest. And then to find out that I would be with child the entire experience has been beyond belief. I can only thank God for this miracle and put my trust in him. And now as I sit here, realizing the love and labor that I put into this garden that allowed me to pour forth my whole soul and being into the love of this creation, I can only put myself into God's hands. I am waiting for my cousin, Mary, to come and pay me a visit. She will be my companion during my time of internment. I have not seen her for ages. I remember her as a small girl. She was quiet and very considerate of everyone's feelings. It will be wonderful having another female to discuss my progress and to give me encouragement. I can hardly wait until she gets here. Wait unless my old eyes are deceiving me. I think I see her coming up the road. I must get myself together and go to meet her. Praise God. Oh Mary, how wonderful to have you here. When you greeted me, I felt the child in my womb leap. I was encompassed by the Holy Spirit and immediately knew that you were the one chosen to bear the Messiah. By receiving the Holy Spirit, I was able to prophesy that you were to be the mother of the Messiah. I am so blessed indeed. I then asked why I was so favored by this encounter. I realized that the child within me would indeed be an important part of the Messiah's joy, uh, life. When the promises we hope for are fulfilled, make us like Elizabeth willing to sing out our joy. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, 
Where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. When they heard the king, they went their way, and lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. I've been in power a long time now. 35 years ago, I was appointed by Mark Anthony and confirmed by the Senate in Rome as King of Judea, or if you will, the King of the Jews. That's about as high as you can get these days in the Roman Empire. We have the best army in this part of the world since King David, or maybe ever. We keep the bandits off the road. We've built the greatest port ever at this end of the Great Sea, at Caesarea. We have fortresses. We put down any revolt swiftly and harshly. We've got running water in Jerusalem with the palace and the temple. You should see this temple. Even Solomon would be impressed. The only bothersome thing is some of these Jews who are too, well, Jewish. They read their Torah and prophets and say someone like me doesn't show up in their plans. I put in who I want as the high priest and temple officials, and that seems to get them upset, but I can't have anyone in there whose loyalty might be in question. A lot of peasants and craftsmen think these guys are important, so if they're saying something I don't want them to, we could have a riot on our hands. One day, not too long ago, we get these astrologers from somewhere way over east beyond Babylon, said they'd been traveling a long way and that a star had led them to me. Of all the nonsense, over in Rome, they've been talking about astrologers being banned from the empire. Good riddance, if you ask me. But here's the thing, they asked, where is he that has been born king of the Jews? What? There is no king but me. Still, if there was some usurper about, I'd better know about it. So I called my advisors, who actually do read the scriptures, to see if they knew. Actually, they did find a prophecy about a star rising out of Bethlehem. Bethlehem? Just down the road here but known as the city of David. Of course, it was David who built Jerusalem, and I'm honoring David by rebuilding it. It was a rat-infested mess before I got here, and now look at what I've done with it. Beautiful walls all around. So anyhow, my people told that to these wise guys and sent them off. But I told them to come back and let me know exactly where he was so I could worship him also. I mean, wouldn't they want the king to come and honor the new king? Didn't mean any harm at the time, I swear. But those scoundrels didn't come back. After a couple of weeks, I sent my men out to look for them. Shouldn't have been hard to find with camels and all. It's only people traveling a long way who have camels. But they must have given us the slip. We were too slow. So we came up with a plan that the Romans would love. Since we couldn't tell which kid it was who was the, quote, newborn king, but we did know Bethlehem, we just cast a wide net, take all of them less than two years old in that district, and get rid of them. Let the religious people explain it for them. There's plenty of suffering in this world, and the king has to do what the king has to do. So far, nothing awful has come out of it for us, and no more astrologers are coming by with strange words. Long live Judea and Herod, its king. When we feel threatened and cling tightly to control, 
Make us willing to let go and trust your timing. Mighty God, kindle, we pray, in every heart the true love of peace and guide with your wisdom those who take counsel for the nations of the earth that in tranquility your dominion may increase until the earth is filled with the knowledge of your love. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. The sign that had been foretold so many centuries before finally appeared in the night sky. There was some discussion among us about its true nature. Was it the star? are just another sign ending in disappointment. After some consideration, my colleagues and I agreed. The bright star rising in the east was the one foretold. And so we started on our journey. Eastward, we traveled. The star was visible even in the daylight. However faint, it filled us with hope and anticipation through the hot desert days. A king awaited us. We prepared our gifts, gold for a king, frankincense for a priest, myrrh, the sacrifices offered. This would not only be a king, it was the king who would bring salvation to mankind. When we reached Galilee, we turned south to Jerusalem. It seemed as if the star had turned as well. We sought an audience with the king Rome had established in Jerusalem, as was customary. We informed him of our precious agenda to pay homage to a newborn king, recently born beneath the omen of a star. Herod was aware of the rumors of this star, had raised and pleaded with us to inform his liaison of the child's location when we discovered it. There were hushed whispers that Herod had already begun slaughtering infants to prevent this child king from living to usurp him. When we found the infant, we were astonished to see him swaddled in rags, held in the arms of a young woman, resting in the straw in the barn. It was, it was beyond capacity to understand the workings of the universe in this fashion. We paid our tribute and we told the parents of King Herod's awful act. They should flee to safely, we begged them. We then took an alternative route to return to our land, and so it is written. When we see the promise of your call, make us like the Magi, willing to follow wholeheartedly. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus 
that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. It was a peaceful night in the city of Bethlehem. The night sky had so many beautiful stars as far as the eye could see. It was a normal night and business was good. Since Caesar Augustus mandated that all citizens of the empire return to their hometowns, the inn was overrun with people coming back home. In fact, my inn was completely booked. I didn't have room for anyone else. I remember saying to myself, I hope no one else shows up at this hour. If they do, they'll have to sleep in the barn. Unfortunately, two late travelers showed up. All the other inns in the village were at full capacity, and my place was the last place in town. It was a young couple who had come. They had taken a while to travel since the woman was pregnant and expecting to give birth at any moment. They were a nice couple. I came to find out that they had traveled all the way from Galilee. Joseph and Mary were their names. Joseph made a living as a carpenter. Since I didn't have room in the inn, I let them stay in the barn. What was I supposed to do? Kick them out and make them sleep on a dark path outside my business? I'm not a monster. I made it as comfortable as possible for them, but it was still a barn. The place reeked of sheep, cows, and donkeys. In the middle of the night, Mary gave birth to a beautiful, healthy baby boy. They named him Jesus. Exhausted from the whole ordeal, Mary put Jesus in a manger. Off in the distance, an angel appeared to the shepherds, watching over their flock. The, fl the shepherds came to see Jesus. After Jesus was born, I could see a huge ball of fire in the night sky. This star stayed in the sky for several months. I don't know why, but I have a feeling that this boy is going to make a lot of people happy someday. I looked at that baby and something inside me said that he was going to be a good leader someday. When we feel like we can do no more, make us like the innkeeper, willing to share willing to hope. Let us pray. Merciful God, we remember before you all poor and neglected persons who it would be easy for us to forget, the homeless and destitute, the old and the sick, and all who have none to care for them. Help us to heal those who are broken in body or spirit and turn their sorrow into hope. Grant this for the love of your Son, who for our sake became poor, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in the bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. I have born a son, just like the angel said. He is exquisite, beyond beautiful, anything more beautiful than I can have imagined. Beautiful and perfect, 10 tiny fingers and toes, a small round head covered in the softest hair, 
like fine silk. I am in love, forever bound to this child as never before to anyone and never again to anyone else. I am his, and for a short time, he will be mine. My heart is bursting with love and joy as I put him to my breast. My senses are humming, heightened awareness. God is here with Joseph and me in this lowly place. The night is buzzing, but yet so full of peace, surreal. The world is forever changed. Even the animals know. He is so small, a baby, yet regal in his own way. A king, the angels say. I don't fully understand, but I will trust in God. I am his servant. Great kings have come to kneel down at the feet of my baby. Our baby? He is my baby, but does not belong to me. What will this mean? My body aches. I want to sleep. I am cold and hungry. I want my mother. But no, already Joseph says we must go, flee to Egypt. He is a good, trustworthy man. I owe my life to him. He will help me raise this child, the King, the Messiah. When we behold the wonder of a newborn child, make us mindful that in the smallness of our lives, you send enormous love. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In that region, there were shepherds living in the sh fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of a great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will, find a uh, you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. I know you ain't going to believe me, but this thing happened that scared me like to die. We were in the field below Bethlehem, and it was a night. There was a lot of light, though, called that big old star. We were watching the sheep, but they were sleeping. So we were sitting around the fire, talking and drinking beer. Then suddenly, this whole cluster of people, kind of glowing-like, kind of tall and very unusual-like, were standing just above us on the hill. We didn't see him come, and we didn't see him go. And they started singing in a weird way, like the sound was all over, not just coming out of their mouths. The song was familiar, but I'm not sure what it was. They sang, and then they spoke, like one voice. But it sounded like they was all saying the same thing at the same time. But get this? None of their mouths moved at all. We were spooked. I thought they was a ghost. Saul thought that they was from outer space. We huddled together and prayed they go away. They somehow told us all to up into Bethlehem and find a baby. Like, what in the G will the curse are we going to do with a baby? But when they left, just as fast as they got there, we decided, well, we don't want them coming back so we better do what they said. We didn't have to look hard. We heard a baby crying and this whole ruckus going on in the first barn we passed, just beside the city entrance. Saul went up and poked his head through the door of the barn. The noise was quieter and the baby had quit squawking. There was a lady, poor young thing, 
half her clothes were covered in blood from the birthing, and there was the man looking all worried and worked up, probably the father, and there were all the animals just as staring at that baby like it was a big pile of clover. That baby was something to behold, but as you know, most babies are. It was sucking away at its mother's breast, just as sweet and content. But when it felt the breeze from the open door, it pulled away and turned and looked at us. Not like a newborn baby, mind you, they as blind as bats. But like an older baby, it looked at us like it saw us. Not gonna lie, it would have given me the shivers. But then it went back to drinking, and instead of feeling scared, I felt like we were seen, seen by a baby that could see. We didn't know what to do exactly, but we didn't want to make those cluster people mad. So we all just hunkered down for a minute as Saul told Mama and Daddy what had happened to us. They didn't seem surprised. Probably weird stuff had happened to them too. We gave the Mama some of our blankets and a little money to help her get some clean clothes. Then we left. Something about that baby made me feel hopeful and bold, like there will be a new day for our poor old country and new hope for all of us shepherds live outside the town and have so few comforts. When we do not understand, like the shepherds, make us willing to move past fear and claim hope. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made yourself known in your son Jesus, redeemer of the world. We pray that his birth as a human child will set us free from the old slavery of our sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God. I have lived a very long life filled with love and the hope of God and the knowledge that before I die, I will see Isaiah's prophecy of the birth of Messiah become reality. Many years ago, I was visited by the Holy Spirit who revealed this to me. Before I draw my last breath, I will hold this sacred child in my arms and be a witness to this most holy and momentous event. Now, as I sit at the temple in Jerusalem, having been prompted by the Holy Spirit to come here today, I know that something of extreme importance is about to happen. I am filled with excitement and expectation. I look up, and there is a man and a woman approaching with a child. They enter the temple, and the moment I see them, I know. This is the Son of God. This is the Messiah. I approach them and ask to hold the baby. As I take him into my arms, I am filled with a feeling of certainty and peace. This baby will redeem Jerusalem and will save us all. He will bring light into our darkness and nothing will ever be the same.
When we wait and wait and wait, like Simeon, may we believe that what we long for will be fulfilled. A reading from the Gospel of Luke. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband 70, no, seven years after their marriage, and then with a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of, it, of Jerusalem. Sometimes I get so tired and hungry, fasting and praying night and day. It has been decades since I first came into this temple seeking your will for me. But what choice did I have? You were my only hope. My husband is gone. I have no sons to care for me. The simple, the simple was my only solace. Being in the sacred space set aside for the Holy of Holies. Every day, all through the night, my life is a prayer, seeking that which is unknown, understanding only that that is yet to be. So many years I've been doing this, calling out to you, my Lord God, to hear my prayer. In my moment of weakness, I fell to my knees, thinking this was my end time, asking one more time for you to bring me into your understanding of what it is I seek, what it is that I know you wish me to see. Open my ears that I may hear. Open my eyes and help me see. One last prayer. And then, suddenly, I hear Simeon's voice exclaiming wonder and glory. I see a light shining around him as he cradles something in his arms. He joyfully exclaims, My eyes have seen your salvation, Lord God. Right here in my arms I hold the light of revelation for all the people of the earth. All your glory, Lord God. What was I to do but turn aside to see the strange thing, this light shining from the eyes to see? And see I did, and I knew. In his arms he held the wonder of the world. That for which I had been longing was revealed to me in the flesh of this tiny babe. In the light shone around him, in the glory that he was and is and is to be. Before me, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the glory of all creation. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, for I have seen this pure and precious sight. Praise God that I may now rest in that peace that passes out all understanding, knowing that our Savior has come into the world. Praise God, praise God, praise God. When we wait and pray, wait and pray. Like Anna, may we see that you are still with us. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe. You have encircled our lives with every good and perfect gift. You have commanded us to show your splendor to our children and to praise you with lives of love, justice, and joy. Be with us this night and bless this space that it may be a visible sign of your saving grace and bless our crash as it will begin to be seen in the front of the altar. That these things will be visible signs of your saving grace and love in our Christmas celebrations when they arrive. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and 
thick darkness of evil. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Now, Master, you set your servant to go in peace. You have fulfilled your promise. My own eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all peoples, a light to bring the Gentiles from darkness, the glory of your people, Israel. Amen. To love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to give thanks to the voices of the people who wrote our imaginings. They are members of our congregation and of our diocese. So thank you to them. If you were a writer, would you please stand? One of the members of our writing team is a candle that uh, in memory of him. So thank you to all who who wrote, and thank you to all who are here and those on the live stream. God bless you. Good night. <laughs>